Greetings. Today I'm going to talk about a cultural anime. If you like mystery and fantasy, then you should watch this anime. If you don't know where to watch it, Google and Incognito are your best friends. The main character, Hikari, is a cat girl, and she is also a detective. She is not your typical detective. She is a spirit detective, which means that she only deal cases involving evil spirits. This black and white cat, Tomakin, is her companion, and its pronouns are they them since it can transform into both male and female. Anyways, they received a phone call from someone. Hikari, it seems like someone has requested her for help, and they have a case to solve now. After that, they went to the village office to meet her client. It is a guy, and it looks like he knew her. She did some cringe stuff, and he is speechless after seeing that. Then, he starts to brief her about her current case. I guess he is her informant or something, and his name is Kanmachi. He informed her that a girl was found unconscious at a mountain of a certain village. That girl's life is not in danger, but her dungeon has been explored like it is an open house. Well, I cannot show it here, but the guests have left a lot of creamy protein shake as visiting gift. In addition, she is not the only victim. There are many who face the same fate as her. When they regain consciousness, all of them had the same answer. They want to get their dungeon explored to get rid of the curse of becoming a witch. I guess their wish has been fulfilled after all. He also speculated that the mountain might be infested by evil spirits, since there were many rituals being carried out there in the past. Well, the ritual is called divergenization. After listening to all of that, she assured him that she will solve this case. He introduced her to the villagers so she can get more information from them. This old man is the village chief, while the lady is the innkeeper. When Tomakin saw them, it has a feeling of unrest. After that, the village chief starts to explain the ritual to her, and it seems like he is telling the truth. Then, it is the innkeeper's turn. By the way, her name is Turako. They went to her lodging to investigate the case even further. Turako told them that all of the victims stayed at her place, and there is nothing sus about them. Ikari wants to know how long Turako has been working here. She told Ikari that she is a cultural worker, and she definitely paid taxes to the government. <laughs> Anyways, Ikari believed her since she has superior gene. After all of that, she wants to leave and call it a day. Before she left, Tarako stopped her and invites her to stay for a night here since it is getting dark soon. Ikari thanked her and accepted her offer. However, it seems like Tarako might be the one who is causing all of this. When they are in the room, she is so lost since she couldn't find any useful clue. She wants Tomakin to help her, but it chose to sleep instead. Now, that is my spirit animal right there. Anyways, she is also done with Tomakin and immediately went to bed. Suddenly, when she wakes up, she realizes that she is in a strange place now. Tomakin also doesn't know how did they get here. After a while, a monster appeared before them. Tomakin told her that it is a monster which can manipulate dream, so this means that they are in a dream world now. After that, the monster spawned some guys, and all of them attacked Ikori. <laughs> Since this is a cultural anime, 
Her life is definitely not in danger. They are just role-playing as TSA right now, and they are performing a full-body inspection on her. Although she knew that she is in a dream, she couldn't do anything. After that, they start to explore her dungeon like it is an open house, and they gave her a lot of fresh organic protein pie. After Tomakin saw that, it became very angry and transformed into its battle form. He immediately destroyed those guys with one swoop. I don't understand why didn't he do that before she got her dungeon explored. Anyways, Hikari told him that she remembered something. This landscape is the same as the mountain where she ran from. In addition, she might have some traumatic experience there, so she is unable to focus. After that, the monster transformed into its true form. It is a woman, and she told them that they are in her domain right now. It seems like she wants to consume Hikari's soul. <laughs> Tomakin immediately launched an attack on her, but it was blocked. She makes fun of him for being weak. So, he spawned his Excalibur and attacked her dungeon. She did not see that coming, but she will be coming later. I think you guys definitely need to watch the original sauce. His Excalibur is so fucking huge, and I have no idea how the hell does it enter her dungeon like that. Anyways, she knew that she has messed up, and she immediately begs for forgiveness. I guess no one can stand against the legendary Excalibur after all, not even the editor. Moving on, he ignores her and used Protein Blast on her in the end. She was defeated, and they returned to the real world. Despite that, she is still in the same state, and she deduced that the victim were attacked in this lodge, then they were left at the mountain. This means that Turaco is the one who attacked them. When they went to meet her, she is passed out on the ground, and her dungeon is overflowing with Protein Shake. Therefore, Turaco is a monster, and Hikari is going to hand her over to the authority. After a few days, she received a phone call again, and she received a new case. This time, it is at a hot spring resort. As usual, she is looking for Kenmachi, and she found him. She did her catchphrase again, or should I say catphrase? <laughs> Anyways, he informed her that the victims are attacked at this hot spring resort. Just as expected, the victims were all female, and they are alone at that time. In addition, they claim that something soft attacked them, and they are forced to reach the peak every time. Fortunately, their life are not in danger. He also told her that this incident might be related to the incident at that mountain. After listening to that, she happily went to enjoy the hot spring without giving a single fuck. When she is at the hot spring, she met a girl there, and her name is Mei. Ikari wants to know about the incidents that were happening here, but Mei told her that she is just a part-timer who only started her work last month. In the meantime, she is also cleaning the bath area. After a while, she finished her task and excused herself. After that, Hikari saw a sign stating that there is a beauty salon. So, she wants to try it out. When she went there, she saw a guy, or is that really a guy? Anyways, who gives a shit? He is the beautician, and he is carrying out therapy on her. In the end, she managed to reach the peak as well. However, Tomakin told her that he has no vile intent, and he is just doing his work. <laughs> <sighs> this means that he is not the culprit, so she is clueless again. She is feeling demotivated, so she wants to dip in the hot spring again. <sighs> <laughs> Once she reached there, Tomakin warned her since there is something in the hot spring. Suddenly, she was being attacked by some tentacle-looking things. Then, they found out that it is Mei who is the one attacking everyone here. She is also a monster as well, and it looks like she is the rainbow member, since she is enjoying performing a full body check on Ikari. After Ikari has used Holy Water Blast, Tomakin transformed into his battle form again. 
He is going to save Hikari by attacking Mei. By the way, since Mei is a monster and Tamakin is a cat, the FBI is not going to do anything. As usual, he used his mighty Excalibur to launch an attack on her dungeon, and he gave her a lot of fresh creamy protein pie in the end. As a result, Mei was defeated, and she couldn't move anymore. Hikari is very surprised since she is very normal looking, so this means that she must not judge a book by its cover. Mei suddenly informed them that there is someone planning all of this, and they will not get away from that person. This means that there is a mastermind behind these incidents, and Hikari has a bad feeling about this. <laughs> After a few days, she received a phone call, and as always, this means that she has a new case to solve. However, this time, it is different. Kimachi informed her that the victims are male, and they had been despawned. After investigation, the police force determined that the victims passed away due to heart attack, probably from using too much protein blast. When they went to the victim's house, they found out that the victim is a weeb, and there is a lot anime posters and body pillows. Coincidentally, everyone has almost the same room set up. <laughs> After a while, Kenmachi told her that he is going back to the police station and excused himself. Then, Hikari starts to investigate this weird case. She has no idea how can someone relax when they are surrounded by a shit ton of cultural anime posters. After that, she starts to search the victim's browser history. I guess the victim doesn't have the time to delete it before they passed away. Suddenly, she saw a holy relic on the cabinet. She has no idea what that is, so she starts to inspect it. She accidentally activates it, and the holy relic conveniently slipped into her dungeon. Tomakin saw that, and instead of helping, he starts to drink some holy water from her dungeon, and she managed to roleplay as a water fountain in the end. Then, she continued her search on the browser history and stumbled upon a website which sells body pillow. So, she is going to order one for research purposes. <laughs> After a few days, her parcel has arrived safely, and it is a body pillow cover. In addition, she also bought a holy relic too. Then, she starts to use the holy relic on the body pillow cover, and the character came to life. Now, that is some next level black magic shit. Anyways, she deduced that every victims had ordered the same body pillow cover, and it is the only one that has always gone missing. So, she knew that something is fishy, and it is not her dungeon. Moving on, that lady transformed into her original form, which is a raccoon girl called Bata Tanuki. Well, I will just call her Tanuki. Hikari wants her to surrender, or she will continue to use the holy relics on her. However, joke's on her, Tanuki is actually into that shit, and she flexed her Excalibur to Hikari. She has no idea what in the biology hell is this, so she is stunned there. Tanuki took this opportunity and launched an attack on her dungeon using her own Excalibur. Now, that is some pride moments going on here. After a while, Tamakin transformed into its battle form, and he immediately charged into Tanuki's backdoor dungeon. The three-way battle is very intense, and all of them managed to reach the peak at the same time. Despite that, Tanuki is still standing strong, and Hikari asked her to give up. Tanuki told her that the human's law and rules do not apply to her, since she is just a monster. <laughs> After that, she gave Hikari a warning and teleports away. It seems like the mastermind is called in Yugami. After hearing that, Tomakin looks very worried after he found out about the name of the mastermind. Inugami? Masaka, sonna hazu wa... Doushita no, Tomakin? In the meantime, there is a white-haired lady wandering in the forest, and she wants to consume Hikari. I guess that lady is in Yugami. After a few days, Taraco, Mei, and Tanuki teamed up to get that fresh protein shake from a human. They keeps launching their attack on his Excalibur nonstop, and that guy probably has the best time of his life before he was despawned. 
It looks like they want to get revenge on Ikari and Tomokin. Anyways, Ikari got a phone call as usual, and she received a new case. Then, she went to the forest to meet Kenmachi, but there is no sign of him anywhere. Suddenly, she heard his voice and looked toward the direction of his voice. However, she saw three of them instead. It seems like Tanuki is mimicking Kenmacha's voice to lure Ikari here. They declared that they are going to get revenge on both of them for humiliating them last time. Ikari does not give a shit and asks them to surrender instead. They got angry and Tanuki launched the first attack. She jumped into the air and increased the size of her hopes and dreams enough to crush Ikari. The editor would definitely love to learn that skill. Anyways, Ikari tries to dodge it, but her leg was caught by Mei, so she was immobilized by the giant melons. After that, Turako wants to end the battle by launching her final attack on Ikari. However, she doesn't realize that Tomokin has transformed into his battle form, and he managed to block the attack effortlessly. He told them that he is very angry right now, since they had hurt Ikari. <laughs> They are going to face the same attack that Ikari took in the past. He starts with Mei, and since she loves to lick others, he did the same to her, and she reached the peak instantly. Then, it's Turako's turn, and since she likes to use Shadow to gang up on others, he spawned a lot of tentacle-looking things and used all of them on her dungeon. Now, that's a lot of damage. After that, it is Tanuki's turn now, and he told her that since she likes dungeon exploration a lot, she shall know pain during that. So, he explored the shit out of her dungeon, and she passed out in the end. After all of that, they saw someone walking toward them. It is in Yugami, and Hikari felt an unusual aura from her. As expected, Tomokin knew who Inugami was. Then, he told Hikari the truth. Okay, this is going to be very confusing. Basically, this body belongs to Hikari's mom, and the soul trapped inside is her dad. This means that both of their soul are in the same body. <laughs> In addition, Inugami was her father's previous lover, and she wants to get revenge on him for dumping her. Wait a fucking second. This means that he did some family-friendly stuff with Ikari before, and his wife is watching. Anyways, Inugami immediately attacked Tomokin, and he couldn't get away. She is very powerful, and she takes on his Excalibur like a strong and independent woman. After a while, he used Protein Blast, but it is not very effective. Instead, Inugami absorbed his protein, and managed to increase her power even more. She told him that she has absorbed his life essence, and he is going to get despawned soon. Ikari became very sad, and begs him not to go away. <laughs> When she is crying, her tears dropped on his face, and he has regained his spiritual power. That pushed Inugami away, and she is shocked after seeing that. Then, Tomokin stated that they should deepen their familial bond even further. So, they did some family-friendly protein time together. After that, he felt a surge of power coming in him. Then, it is his turn to counter-attack now. Inugami couldn't lay a finger on him, and he explored the shit out of her dungeon till her soul was released from the vessel. Those three monsters saw that, and they immediately ran away for their life. I don't understand why would someone run from the legendary Excalibur and fresh protein shake. Well, that is the end of my recap for this cultural anime. This anime has four episodes, and it's recommended to watch all of them for the plot. These are the comments and feedback for this anime from a cultural website.
So, what do you guys think about the plot and animation of this anime? Let me know in the comment section after you watched it alone, or with your families.